Hi folks, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be looking at something that I shared on Instagram earlier in the week that generated a lot of interest. It's the rifle that gave me um, an interest outside of hunting rifles and shotguns. Today we're gonna to be looking at my M1 Grand. So let's jump into that. So here it is. My M1. And what you'll see different about this, and I'm gonna go over this rifle as we look at it your first thing you'll notice is the stock is fairly shiny my old man bought this rifle when i was 12 years old from a certain local surplus store old man had and this rifle like i said is what gave me an interest in things other than hunting bolt action rifles shotguns things like that when we got it um it had some terrible uh, hand guards up here they were some kind of old European burst or something they was badly dinged up they didn't match the walnut so he ordered these hand guards new and what we've done is he baked the original stock in our oven I'll never forget it got all the cosmoline and oils out of it and this is a Birchwood Casey true oil and that's been on here going on 22 years the stock like I said, it's an uh, issued stock. This rifle was a lend-lease rifle, too. I may, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that. So I don't know exactly what the story is with the stock, but I'll tell you this. You can fairly, barely see um, the stamping there. It had two holes drilled in it here where they had a grenade sight screwed on here. The, my daddy still got the base somewhere that he took off. It had a round base. I have no idea what happened to it over the years, but it's got the uh, P mark on the uh, grip. You've got uh, that mark in there, and, and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be an eagle with, with uh, some stars and a couple of arrows, but I can't, uh, you can't make it out anymore. Um, excuse this truck going down the road. But when I say this was a land lease, this thing is a mix match hodgepodge of parts, but it is an absolute fantastic shooter. So the receiver is a Harrington Richardson, made in the 50s, can't tell you an exact date. Um, it has a Springfield Armory bolt. I'm pretty sure the operating rod is a Springfield Armory. What makes this rifle such a great shooter is the barrel. When this thing went to the Danish for the land lease, they replaced the original barrel in April of 1966 with what the, what is called a VAR barrel. Now they're manufacturing, I can't tell you anything about it other than when you read about a VAR barrel, they're highly desirable. They're very, very good shooters and this one shoots better than I can shoot it. I, I mean, I've shot this thing for many years. I've hunted with it. And it's never, ever let me down. It has been a great rifle. Another interesting thing about the land lease that I'll show you right here is the trigger group in this thing. The receiver is a Harrison Richardson. Again, Springfield, Bolt, Danish barrel, but another European um, piece to this is the markings on the trigger assembly. BMB. That is a uh, trigger group was made by Beretta. They had uh, my understanding. They bought the um, Winchester tooling, uh, part of the land lease thing, and they started manufacturing uh, parts. Beretta did. It, um, this thing, like I said, I have carried it, hunted, I've hunted with it. It has been uh, uh it was an important part of my growing up from time like i said i was 12 years old um the thing about the m1 grand is you can't shoot commercial ammunition newer commercial ammunition the the loading on it my understanding it it'll bend this operating rod and you don't you don't want to have to replace an operating rod it's very expensive so um Shooter, Schooner, S-H-U-N-T-E-R, Schooner. 
company. I believe that's how you say it. I may be mispronouncing that. They make an adjustable gas plug. Now, I've had this one for years. This was one of the first things when I got to be an adult that I ordered from Brown Ales. We always shot um, surplus ammunition or my daddy reload grand safe ammunition for this. When I got older, I bought this for Brown Ales many, many years ago, and they still have them on their website. You can find them there adjustable gas plug and, and what it does is it replaces the factory gas plug and you adjust this allen screw in here and it lets some of the gas come out the front to to not put over pressure the operating rod if you plan on shooting anything other than uh surplus ammo if you can find it anymore it's about dried up or hand loading for it or buying seller and billet or uh, hornady grand safe ammo that's the route to go I put this thing in this rifle and I hunted for many years with 180 grain core locks with this rifle. I've got some surplus ammo. We're going to, I'm going to shoot these eight for you today. Um, I bought this years ago at the CMP. It is a um, Greek HXP from 1972. They used, CMP used to sell it in spam cans and that stuff has since dried up and I happen to have some of it left so we're gonna i'm gonna shoot that for y'all today the thing about the grand you know everything's magazine fed but this one's actually internal magazine fed from a clip one of the only clip fed i guess you would say uh guns there is but well, i'm going to uh we're down here at the 100 yard line i'm gonna get my camera turned around and pointed to the uh steel target i've got out here and we'll put them eight rounds on steel All right, our 100-yard silhouettes right there. Got eight rounds of uh, 30 out 6 1972 Greek um, HXP. Let's see if these sights are still on enough to give y'all a ping. It's been a while since I've shot this rifle, and I can't tell you exactly if it's still zeroed or not, so let's find out. Like I can still hit man size target at 100. Let's go back to the tailgate. All right, something else I wanted to show y'all uh, before I let you go. Not only do I collect guns and am a lover of history, I collect, I like to collect surplus stuff too. And uh, I started with this kit, being as that rifle was a, is a Korean era receiver. My granddaddy was drafted into Korea. I just, I've had an interest in that time period. Uh, thanks to Kenny O, Field Gear Bible 2 on Instagram, he got me started on something, a path that I'm going down, and it was the biggest part of it come from him. And that's this main pack here. I've had this cartridge belt for years, but Kenny had this pack, and uh, he and I done some... Uh, trading on some other stuff I had and he got me this uh, Korean era uh, pack and suspenders that goes to this cartridge belt now the cartridge belt holds uh, 10 clips a standard load for an M1 grand was 10 clips Had 5 on one side 5 on the other it, this uh, cartridge belt was missing this center part in the back this is actually the uh, sling off uh, one of the big green duffel sea bags. It's exactly the same size, so I've just put it in there so I can wear this thing. Eventually, I'm gonna try to find the correct um, centerpiece. The only difference in this weld that come off that sea bag and the center thing is it's got some of these uh, M1910 eyelets on it, best I can tell. Uh, Otter Paul Trading Company, my buddy Jerry, has also been helping me out finding some of this 1950s 
stuff. Just about every bit of this is 1952 dated. Um, Jerry uh, was able to get me this um, canteen cover. And granted, it's got somebody's name wrote on it, but that's okay. It's history. I've got a 1952 canteen cup that goes in it that I have yet to put in there. Uh, he got me this um, first aid pouch that still has the original um, battle dressing in it from the 50s. And when I started going to the CMP as an adult and getting ammo and stuff, I got this uh, M5 bayonet and the sling that's on the rifle uh, down there from the CMP. So I I think, best I can tell, I've about got a complete kit here to go along with the rifle just because I like collecting this stuff. I believe the only thing I'm missing is the um, entrenching tool and cover. It goes right here on uh, these uh, eyelets. The cover does and the handle sticks down and fastens right there. But I need the uh, canteen to go in the cup and the entrenching tool, I believe is all I like as far as having the complete uh, belt kit for a um, that rifle for the era. All right, I'll give y'all one last look at this rifle and I'll let y'all go. Well, this is her, my Harrington Richardson M1 Grand. It's a land lease mutt. There's nothing part wise that matches and I that's I'm fine with that. I love this rifle. Again, it's what got me into uh shooting things other than uh bolt action deer rifles, shotguns, twenty twos. Well I appreciate y'all coming by. Appreciate you taking the time to watch this. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, uh I generally post this stuff up, get a feel for how people takes to it. And then, you know, if it's something like this week, this was pretty popular. I'll give y'all a video on it. Or if you got any suggestions um, for me, leave them in the comments. Um, I'd ask that you'd uh, like and subscribe to me if you hadn't already. And as always, I appreciate y'all coming by. Uh, I appreciate the views and all the support I get. Y'all make this worth, the social media stuff worth doing, the people I interact with. I've made several friends on Instagram. I've talked to several people here on YouTube. And y'all really make social media worth doing. Um, I've had a lot more pleasant, positive uh, interactions than I have negative. So as always, I appreciate y'all. I thank y'all for stopping by, and I'll catch you next time.